Hey guys, how you doing? It's Kevin, Jack of all trades, king of nothing, out here in the woods today to play with one of these. I finally got my hands on one of Urinetti's infamous Basque axes. The only question is, which one did I go with? There she is, the infamous Basque axe, made by one man and one man only. And I'm excited to see and determine whether or not this is just an oddity among oddities or whether this is sort of the ultimate limmer slash feller and perhaps even a great pack axe. It fits in the pack real nice. Uh, it barely extends beyond the pack and with the tarp on the bottom, it doesn't at all. It doesn't uh, interfere at all with walking. I get a 30 inch handle on there and it will sometimes hit me in the, in the knee. Not with this guy. Hang in there and we'll determine that for ourselves in just a moment. First, I gotta get the area cleared up with the other tool that I wouldn't go without in the summer and that's the machete. tight quarters in here which uh, really helps with the short handle because I don't have a lot of room to swing and this is the reality of limbing a lot of times you gotta play it where it lies left-handed chopping. It's nice having this wide blade because uh, the chances of overstriking is less. And because of the thin geometry there, it does bite deep. All I did was put a secondary bevel on it. Um, bastard file, then a smooth cut file. And she seems to be cutting pretty well so far through this maple. Check out that profile. <whistles> So I've been looking for uh, like the perfect limbing axe. And with this wide straight bit and a short handle, it's on like a 23 and a half inch handle, which is shorter than I ever thought would be usable. I, um, I think like 25 is the shortest that I feel comfortable with. But having used that uh, oxen cuff, which ended up on a 25 inch handle, I was surprised that it didn't feel awkward. So given that these are hard to come by, um, when they do become available, you got to kind of take what is available. Plus, most of them are too heavy for my liking. And this is still considered one of their felling axes with the straight bit rather than the curved bit. That was the main thing that kept me from buying a Basque axe for so long is that most of them have very curvy bits. And that's one thing I definitely agree with uh, Dudley Cook on 100% is that uh, from a theoretical standpoint and from a performance standpoint, you want a straight bit. Um, that's simply because when you're overlapping your cuts, you want each cut to uh, penetrate the wood at about the same depth. So I got the straight bit on a 
23 and a half inch handle. Comes with a really nice sheath. Um, no welt, but I don't even, uh, yeah, I don't care. It's a slip fit, which will be, which is another one of my concerns. I gotta say, it's taken everything that um, I have, not to just drive a big ass barrel wedge in there. I won't, it seems like it's on there well. There is a little bit of gap up front there for you gap guys. I'm really impressed at how these come. I mean, it comes sharpened already, and by sharp, I mean the cheeks are already ground for you. I'm just gonna put a chisel, a small chisel grind on there, basically what you would call a secondary bevel, and use it as is. I'll take off the sticker, of course. The handle down here feels super comfortable. Probably the most comfortable handle I've ever felt down in this area. It's a little thick and weird up here. And you can see it's got a little like a divot right here. So uh, take off the sticker, put some linseed oil on it. I'm not going to do anything to the handle as far as thinning. You don't have that much options to thin it down up in this area because it's a slip fit. And it doesn't need thin down here. Put a Scandi grind on it and uh, go out and see how it limbs. This is dangerous chopping like this because the tree is moving so much, which is why I got this in between me in case I do miss. It should hit this old tree here. I don't know if it's just my imagination, but it just seems like this is gonna come loose. We'll see. I can definitely feel that head move there whenever I jam it in there. I don't like that. Look at that. Uh, I'm gonna call it like I see it. I'm not playing favorites here. This is what I have always feared about slip fit handles. That little bit of wiggle there will drive you nuts. I barely use this. That's unacceptable. I'm gonna go ahead and get this tree down on the ground and uh, I will do a little bit of bucking with it, I guess, but look at this. I mean, this is disappointing. It just moves in the head. It's not gonna fly off because of the nature of the slip fit, but that little bit of wiggle drives me nuts in any ax. So I will probably be replacing the handle um, perhaps with one of his longer ones and I'll be fixing it with a wedge and putting it in there for good. I might try it with this one. I might order another one and uh, fix it in there. As far as I'm concerned, the right way. You ca I can't have that looseness like that. It just drives me nuts. All right, let's get this down on the ground. Okay, so it decided it is going to rain, so I got to hurry up and get uh, the tarp up. I think you can hear it. Thankfully, under the tree canopy, it's keeping me dry for now, but I'm gonna get the tarp up just in case it comes down any harder. Probably as soon as I get this up, it'll stop raining. Well, that's what I came up with in a hurry. And as you can see now, the sun's out, of course. I just tied off to whatever I could find. Staked it down on either side in the back. Made a little lean to, but the sun's out again. I brought the tarp because there was a 40% chance of uh, rain, so maybe it won't be for nothing. It's up now. I'm going to leave it there.
I am gonna get back out there and do a little bit more bucking on that maple. But man, this was a disappointment, I gotta say. I really thought this would be uh, the perfect limbing, the, like the perfect out of the box limber. And in many ways it is, but if the handle is not gonna stay tight, it's useless. I've uh, ranted about this before, but that's the only thing that I want to be solid is the hang. If it's not solid, then the ax is useless to me. So uh, I will, um, of course, fix this ax and I'll get back out there and use it again. But I got to say, I had high hopes for this and uh, so far it's a bust. It is a good limber, just needs fixed to the handle. Not right down at the bottom there. That's what was holding it. Maple is about the softest uh, hardwood that I, I'll be cutting, so it's uh, rather enjoyable. Not soft, but softer than anything else I'm usually cutting. I guess I should pay attention. I hurt myself. Let's clean that up a little. Yeah, just that little bit of rocking motion in there drives me nuts. My accuracy is shit today. It's been a long, hot week. A lot of work this week. Been painting exteriors and hanging and taping interiors. Uh, here's why I didn't want to go. Oh, come on. Oh, stringy maple.
This is another way you can split on the ground if you got a fork in the tree. And this piece of maple just happened to have one that I chopped up. And I got a piece of recalcitrant uh, stump there. It's got a knot right there, so we'll put it in the fork and give it help. That backs up your axe. I had to swing harder to get that to bust through that knot, so I didn't want my axe in the dirt. That helps. We'll see if we can bust through that. Try to go right around it. Just like that. Here's another one. You can bust right through these. I'll try to demonstrate that. If you hit it hard enough, it will sometimes split and then crack around it. Sometimes it will bust the knot right through. There you go. You can see in that case, it split right around it. I'll try to split it around there one more time, even though this is probably sufficiently split. Go right there. In the words of Buck and Billy Ray, shaklank, wooden wedge, and not one, but two barrel wedges. That's the way an axe head should be fixed to his handle. It's not coming loose now. Let's get out there and see if it made a difference. Hang on, we're going to the woods. This feels so much better now that it, the handle is tight. Pretty sure this is beech wood too. It's the only handle I have that's not hickory. It's definitely softer because when I was putting that kerf in, I didn't have that much trouble. It's cut pretty easy. It does hurt my hand a little bit. I noticed that maybe because it's really flat, it kind of stings the palm of my hand a bit. Right here. I thought bucking with this short handle would be odd, but honestly, it's not that bad. Feels um, probably a little more tiring because I gotta bend my knees and squat a bit more, but it's really not that bad. It would be hard, I think, if you had a bigger log, you were trying to stand on top of it, because you would really have to bend over to get those bottom chips. But I'm almost never cutting wood that size, with an ax anyway. you had two axes with you one with like a 28 inch handle and this guy I think that could be a dangerous combination because you get used to swinging with that 28 inch handle and then switch over to this I could see you missing short I could definitely see that happening but if you're aware of it it shouldn't be a problem sticky in this. This has uh, been down for a little bit so it's harder too. Alright guys that's about all I got time for today. I'll buck this up and split it next time. Um, I got a lot of paperwork to do. I'm actually procrastinating but this changes things. Fixing this handle to this head makes this a superior axe. It's going to be a great limber and a great feller and it bucks just fine. It splits just fine. 
Maybe it is the perfect camp axe. All right, guys, until next time, I'll see you later. Stay safe.